How are you, Frankie? <laughs> Actually, I've lost my voice. It's slowly coming back. I celebrated like I thought I wanted myself. <laughs> uh, Zara is a good friend, and uh, we all partied on, and uh, what a copybook ride. Actually, reminds me on the Glenn Mikari. when he's wrote his third on Mikari Diva, you know, stayed on the inside and got all the splits. It's just amazing. before we go to the race itself, how, how was it Tuesday night? Uh, just the fun. I mean, for you guys, because you put yourself through such gruelling efforts, the training, the early mornings, yeah. the wasting, and the courage to actually ride a thoroughbred. So when you win, it's a good one to have. It's, a, it's a big relief, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, obviously, they don't come any bigger than the Melbourne Cup, and uh, everybody was in tremendous form, but uh, obviously... The jockeys, what they're running this week, they go in the back of their minds that they still have to turn up on Saturday, on Thursday and Saturday. Saturday so yeah. it, it was it was a part, but it wasn't too crazy. 289 Group One wins for this man, one of the superstars of international racing. And a bloke at the other end, a record three Melbourne Cups. Let's go through what it takes to win the Melbourne Cup. Um, so, and, and the riding. We'll roll some videotape here and have a look at uh, what was going on on Tuesday. How did you see not only Mark but some of the other riders? On the weekend, there's been a, some criticism of Joe Moreira. Um, what's your thoughts for Joe? Uh, wrongly, yeah. wrongly criticised. You know what? Yeah, he he might have run he might have run close a second, but he wouldn't have beat the winner. Yeah. Don't worry about that. Um, Joe is a real. He's one of the best riders in the world. He's a field jockey. Um, he went he went right when he probably should have went left, but there's no doubt he would have still only run second. So that's Solcom uh, three in from the fence there now, making its run. But as you say. Uh, Mark Zara's away, isn't he? He's gone. Yeah, I mean, exactly. I mean, a, a, lot, a lot of you said about the second, but if he would have had the wheels of Mark, perhaps they would not have that late burst. Uh, I agree with Glenn. I think the best horse won on the day, and Mark kind of eased up the last 50 yards. Well, well, Mark's in a really enviable position where he's got a horse with really good turn of speed, and he can just sit there and sit there and wait and wait and wait, pick, off, pick the runs as they come, and then knowing when he's going to launch... His horse is going to find three or four lengths really quick. Most of the other rollers in this race don't have that ability. Salkin's one of them. You've seen him. He just keeps coming, coming to the line. He, he's not one of those horses who just gets up and goes. Frankie, uh, you've won everywhere. Uh, you haven't won a Melbourne Cup here, but uh, even on the weekend, you won in California in the Breeders' Cup Carnival. What is there a difference uh, coming out as a jockey, fly in, fly out? Type yeah, of I'll be situation? honest with you, I've, I've done it you know, for the last 30 years. It's not easy. The first night is very difficult. You know, you've got a completely different time zone, northern hemisphere, southern hemisphere. But uh, the adrenaline keeps you going. You know, uh, yeah. you wake up, cup there, you're buzzing, you would, you know, reading the phone, watching the TV, can't wait to get to the races. But, you know, it does take, uh, you know, it takes a good pounding on the body because it hits you about two or three days later. You don't have to tell anyone. <laughs> anyone Australian who's flown back from overseas knows what it's like, fellas, then having to ride in the Melbourne Cup. What does it take to, to, to be the rider in the Melbourne Cup? And, and, and I throw this question out. Even the horses themselves, are we seeing now that horses... I mean, there's only two Australian-bred horses in that race, so they're basically all internationals. Mm. But uh, we saw without a fight having a year here. Disappointing last year. Settled down, got the conditions, trained up. Is that the, is massive, that the recipe for massive success? Massive difference. Yeah. You know, uh, you know, the European horses, they have to change, you know, going from winter summer to, to winter. summer. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a big deal. It takes, you know, uh, at least a year to... to, to Their body clock, yeah, Exactly, right? absolutely, yeah. to, to yeah. change the way. And, uh, and it shows by the result. I mean, uh, without a fight, it's been a revelation this year. You know, uh, you can see. And, uh, and he came into the race, I think it was... And they looked a bit, really. Yeah. I mean, when you looked at the result now, you're thinking, why do we not pick on him? Because, yeah. you know, he came into the race he probably with the best form and the, host, the only horse in the field where he's got a, an absolutely weapon of a turn of foot. I so, think Willie Mullins had us under a bit of a spell yeah. with the, you know, the two horses that were backed like they were off the map. Uh, we just all fell into that same thing. We, and we just, we've probably ignored the obvious, which was the Caulfield Cup, a brutally run race, right, run time, and that horse was running through the line in a Caulfield Cup. International breeding, 12 months of yeah. climatisation, great form coming in. Marks are on board. Why didn't we all back? Exactly. Yeah. Hindsight. It's an amazing it's so thing. What's going on? Uh, sport is wonderful, isn't it? Uh, Frankie, we should be still celebrating. I that correct. <laughs>